Thank you, Chris, for the kind introduction, and thank you uh, all for coming, uh, and thanks to the KCA for putting the, together this uh, conference. So you heard from Dr. Yonash about the different therapies that are FDA approved for uh, kidney cancer. Uh, those uh, drugs are approved based on the most common type of kidney cancer, and that's clear cell RCC. Uh, I can tell you in a word uh, about the non clear cell histologies. In a word, there's really no established uh, agent. Uh, we use these drugs that Dr. Yonash talked about, the different uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors or anti-VEGF therapies, the mTOR inhibitors, but really uh, we do not consider any of these as a standard of care because there has not been this large uh, phase three trial uh, comparing one of these agents with uh, something else uh, to show that uh, these drugs are really uh, beneficial. So what are these uh, different histological subtypes that we refer to? as non clear cell renal cell carcinoma. So uh, you see the list here, uh, papillary type 1 and type 2, renal cell carcinoma, chromophobe. There is a rare tumor called collecting duct or Bellini's tumor. There is also another uh, even more rare tumor that uh, is called uh, renal medullary carcinoma that afflicts mostly in the US African American young patients who have sickle cell trait. Uh, there is uh, a rare tumor that's called translocation renal cell carcinoma, or XP11.2, that afflicts younger people as well, uh, mostly females. And when we do not really know what the, uh, this disease is, we uh, refer to it as unclassified. That's really a reflection of our uh, still, uh, you know, lack of knowledge about the uh, molecular aspect of this uh, subtype of RCC. So we. Uh, dump it into an unclassified basket. And there are even some more rare tumors such as MTS or mucinous tubular and spindle cell carcinoma. And then some case reports have surfaced with even, even rarer tumors. Now, uh, oncocytoma is a uh, benign tumor of the uh, kidney, uh, rarely uh, becomes aggressive and metastasizes. Uh, and for all practical purposes, it's cured. Patients with this uh, disease, with this tumor, are cured with surgery. Now, with each one of these uh, tumors, uh, including the clear cell, the most common type, as well as the non-clear cell I just uh, listed, there is also an added feature that can make the disease even more aggressive. I, I describe this as uh, you know having a turbo charge on your vehicle makes it even more aggressive. So that's the sarcomatoid de-differentiation. So there is a, a plethora of genetic uh, alterations uh, underpinning each one of these uh, tumors. Um, and as I said, you know, the non cell basket of diverse histologies represents about 25% of all uh, kidney cancers. Papillary type one and type two and the chromophobe are the most common uh, subtypes with varying uh, prognosis. So you heard from Dr. Nash about the uh, prognostic models that have been established, um, and that's basically looking at patients with, who have, uh, you know, different performance status, how they function, how active they are, how, how they're able to perform activities of daily living. We look at uh, the time of initial diagnosis of their kidney cancer and when they develop metastatic disease and require initiation of systemic therapy. And we look also at laboratory parameters such as, you know, hemoglobin, you know, anemia, whether they're anemic or not, and whether they have high uh, calcium in their serum and uh, other laboratory abnormalities. Now, this is a model that uh, is now uh, frequently uh, used, uh, established by the International Metastatic Renal Cell Carcinoma Data Consortium. And they looked at these uh, the patients who have the clear cell, the most common type of renal cell carcinoma, and those who have uh, the non-clear cell that I uh, showed you earlier in the slide. And what they found was patients who have uh, a non-clear cell renal cell carcinoma subtype are usually younger, have more anemia and have uh, usually a higher uh, neutrophil count. That's a, a, a form of a white blood cell count. 
and uh, the, this, you know, their outcome is uh, worse. Uh, and in, in that study, again, this is a retrospective review of a large uh, database, the median survival of patients with uh, non cleosal histology was about one year compared to about two years for patients with cleosal histology. Now, there have been some retrospective studies, you know, several years ago now, published looking at the uh, role of TKIs, which you heard earlier, uh, these tyrosine kinase inhibitors, in retrospective studies. Uh, what's their role? What's the outcome of patients with these non cleosal histologies when they were treated with these TKIs? And uh, as you see here in the slide, the bottom line is that the uh, median progression-free survival that basically uh, reflects the time from initiation of the drug until the disease progresses or unfortunately the patient dies. And th these uh, pro median progression-free survival are short. They're shorter compared to what uh, we uh, observe in patients with the most common type of renal cell carcinoma, the clear cell type. Also, when you look at the response rate, uh, that is also a definition, uh, how uh, much did the tumor shrink, um, when, except for chromophobe, which uh, in one study, uh, the retrospective study, a small number of patients was associated with a 25% response rate. When you look at the other, the response rates are really low, much lower than what we see in patients with clear cell RCC. Now, what about uh, some of these earlier trials with senitinib in non clear cell RCCs? Here uh, is a list of four of them. The largest was a study that we conducted here at MD Anderson and published four years ago. And the bottom line here, except for the Korean study uh, by uh, Lee et al. here, that uh, yielded a response rate of 36% and 26% in the papillary histology, the other uh, trials show that the response rate in these uh, tumors uh, is really low. And you, again, when you look at that median PFS, it is uh, about six months or less. And when you look at survival in these uh, two studies up here, this one conducted at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and this was a French study. When you look at uh, the survival, it's, it's really disappointing that the median survival of patients with metastatic non cell RCC treated with sinitinib, which is uh, certainly a standard of care in the clear cell histology and one of the uh, earlier drugs FDA approved more than 10 years ago, the survival of these patients is disappointing in that it is uh, about 18 months or so. So what about looking at mTOR? You heard about the uh, phase three trial of temsirolimus versus interferon. This is the only phase three trial that uh, recruited patients with non cell histologies. About 20% of the patients who were enrolled in this trial had the non cell histologies. Um, again, the uh, median OS, uh, when you compare non cell versus clear cell, was comparable with temsirolimus again, better than what, you see, what uh, you see with interferon alpha, which was used as comparator. The French conducted a, a phase two trial with uh, Everimus in papillary RCC called the Raptor trial, and the primary endpoint of that trial was progression-free survival rate at six months. And here uh, the data is a median duration of exposure, meaning use of Everimus in study was less than five months. Uh, by investigating the patient, the physicians treating those patients, median progression-free survival was about seven months. And about half the patients, or a little over half, had progression, were progression-free at six months. So really nothing really to write home about or be excited about. What about another drug? This is a, another tyrosine kinase inhibitor, but that blocks EGFR. Uh, epidermal growth factor receptor, a drug that's approved for lung cancer, adenocarcinoma of the lung. This was a small study uh, conducted many years ago by the Southwest Oncology Group, and uh, in a 45 uh, patient uh, trial, seven of those were ineligible, the response rate was 11%. Uh, the estimated six months overall survival was 87%, and the estimated median overall survival was 27 months. Again, the FDA did not approve this agent, even though there was some promising activity in, in uh, uh, papillary RCC because of uh, lack of a large, uh, properly powered 
uh, phase three trial. Uh, the, uh, you heard from Dr. Rush about the cabozantinib. This is actually a, a drug that was uh, tested in uh, papillary RCC uh, before cabozantinib. It's a cousin to cabozantinib. It is uh, a drug that uh, was uh, manufactured by Exelixis, the maker of uh, cabozantinib. And it was uh, tested in patients with papillary RCC uh, using two different dosing uh, schemas, either daily dosing or intermittently, five days every two weeks. And the primary endpoints were objective response rate and the secondary endpoints, progression-free survival and overall survival. 74 patients were recruited to the study, and here are the, uh, the two cohorts, with, uh, one, the one with intermittent dosing and one with the daily dosing. And then here, when you look at overall response rate, 13.5%. And when you look at the median PFS, about nine months, interesting. But then you look at uh, the uh, biomarker uh, results of this uh, study, which is the most interesting part of the trial, about 50% um, of the patients, so five out of 10 patients who had germline mutation of MET, that basically they have the inherited syndrome uh, of papillary type 1 RCC, and the uh, response rate was 50%. When you look at the others, patients who had the somatic mutation, that is, they did not inherit the, the germline mutation, but their tumor showed uh, mutation in that uh, uh, MET oncogene, one responded out of uh, uh, five, and that's basically 20%. And then there were, uh, again, yeah, low responses. So the take home message from this trial was, yes, there was some activity, but it appeared that the patients that benefited the most from this uh, CMET inhibitor were patients who had the inherited papillary type one syndrome. But the trial was not developed uh, any further and we still uh, are looking for uh, a, an agent that is uh, effective in uh, papillary RCC. This is a sequel trial to the one I showed you earlier that we published four years ago, and this uh, trial we published just last year. This was a uh, collaborative uh, study that we led here at MD Anderson, uh, comparing uh, two agents that are FDA approved for this cohort or this diverse group of non-clear cell histologists. So we dubbed this trial the ESPN trial. It's Everolimus versus Sunitinib prospective evaluation in metastatic non-clear cell RCC. So the uh, goal of this study, the, the, the study was to compare Sunitinib and Everolimus in these patients with the different histologies. And uh, we looked at, for primary endpoint, end progression-free survival in the first line. We did allow crossover at the time of progressive disease with the first-line agent. Secondary endpoints were survival, objective response rate, PFS, or progressive survival in the second line, objective response rate in the second line. But the main goal of this uh, trial, the main objective, uh, in addition to the clinical parameters we just, we, our endpoints we talked about, was to really understand the biology of these different histological and to create a, a biorepository where we collect tissue from nephrectomy and biopsies on these patients, as well as blood, to really understand more about these diverse histological subtypes of RCC. So here was the, uh, treat, here's the treatment uh, schema. Uh, patients with non cell histologies uh, were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either Everolimus or Sinitinib, and at, at crossover, take the other agent if they wish to do so and their condition permitted. The uh, trial we, we was uh, stopped uh, earlier than the uh, target goal of 108 patients because the data safety monitoring uh, body looked at the results and at preliminary analysis uh, found that uh, patients who were treated with sinitinib had actually better uh, outcome than patients who were treated with Everolimus. So this was counterintuitive because we were thinking that for patients with non cell histologies, they would be benefited uh, uh, more by uh, the mTOR inhibitor, Everolimus, based on that phase three trial that I showed you, the Tempsirolimus versus interferon trial. So we uh, stopped the trial after 73 patients were, in, were um, recruited 
And uh, here are the uh, results. About three, three quarters of the patients had prior nephrectomy, about two thirds had crossed over to the other agent, and unfortunately, over 50% of the patients had died. But when you look at the responses, here you see that the response rate is very low, less than 10%. So less than 10% of patients receiving sinitinib or everolimus in first line responded, had significant shrinkage of their tumors that we arbitrarily take cut off at 30%. So that's really disappointing compared to what we normally expect to see with these agents, especially sinitinib, for example, in patients with clear cell RCC. So again, the results were disappointing in the first line and in the second line. Interesting, and you have the asterisk there, the patients who benefited the most from uh, either drug were patients with chromophobe RCC, which is a rare uh, tumor that is about 5% of patients with RCC will have. And here are, you know, you saw similar data. I don't want to dwell uh, on it. The red curve represents patients treated with sinitinib. The green curve, patients uh, treated with everolimus. And of course, the, the curve that's on top uh, looks like it's better. But uh, this was not stati statistically significant. So our hypothesis initially that patients with these rare non cell histologies will be best served, best treated, with better outcome when they, were, uh, when they receive everolimus did not pan out. So summary of that trial was uh, both agents, everolimus and sinitinib, yielded uh, modest efficacy in patients with metastatic non cell RCC. There were trends for longer progression-free survival in first line and longer overall survival with sinitinib, but this came at a, at a cost of higher rates of uh, toxicity with sinitinib compared to everolimus. Chromophobe RCC showed higher objective response rate, longer progression-free survival, and longer overall survival compared with the other non cell RCC subtypes. The uh, Duke uh, Center led a similar study in 19, uh, at 19 sites uh, in three different uh, continents, uh, uh, in three different countries, basically, uh, US, Canada, and the UK, and they had identical design of randomization, that's random allocation or assignment of therapy to Everolimus or Sinitinib, but there were some differences in the uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, they did not include patients who had uh, sarcomatoid uh, clear cell, who had sarcomatoid dedifferentiation or features, and they did not allow, as we did in our trial, to allow patients to cross over after they, they have progressed disease with their first line. But their uh, results were very similar. Again, you see here the couple of my curves, you know, the patients treated with sunitinib are represented on the blue curve here, and the everolimus on the red curve, and patients treated with sunitinib had a uh, better progression-free survival, longer uh, than patients treated with everolimus. Same thing with overall survival, results again uh, uh, consistent with what we saw in our trial. So, summary for the Aspen uh, uh, trial led by Duke, sunitinib yielded a significantly longer progression-free survival than everolimus, uh, and the benefit uh, with sunitinib was uh, noted in patients with good and intermediate risk disease, papillary and the unclassified subtypes. However, everolimus did uh, have good results uh, in patients with uh, poor risk disease, uh, which is uh, not surprising considering that mTOR inhibitors, uh, especially uh, the study with Temsirolimus, uh, showed improvement in poor risk disease. Uh, and then the chromophobe subtype, as already alluded to. Uh, now, we are doing uh, extensive molecular analysis on these uh, tumor subtypes, and it appears that patients with uh, chromophobe uh, histologies have a uh, higher than what is uh, expected of TSC1 mutation, a mutation in the gene that's, that's uh, called tuberous sclerosis complex gene one. And that makes these tumors chromophobe uh, uh, sensitive to blockade uh, by the mtor co one uh, Temsiramus or Everolimus. But both these agents uh, result in short progressively survival times and low response rates, and uh, that basically uh, underlined the importance of continuing research to find more effective therapies 
for these uh, patients with non cell histologies, but this is, has to be based on a better understanding of the biology of these uh, tumor types. Now, what about uh, some of the ongoing clinical trials for papillary RCC here? I list uh, uh, several for you. <clears throat> this is a trial uh, finished by uh, SWAG looking at a uh, CMET inhibitor here with uh, uh, erlotinib, and the trial was negative. Uh, a couple interesting uh, trials uh, conduct, being conducted right now at the, at the NCI, uh, this agent vandetinib plus metformin, and then bevacizumab plus erlotinib in the uh, hereditary leiomarian carcinoma type. This is the, those are the patients who have the inherited syndrome that leads to uh, uh, development of a very aggressive papillary type 2 RCC. But this trial is also for patients who don't have the inherited syndrome, they have sporadic papillary RCC. There have been uh, some interesting results with this combination, and I think this seems to be something that we need to validate and uh, moving forward, uh, conduct a larger trial to really see if this would be a standard of care in the future for patients with papillary RCC. An interesting trial that, that was uh, led uh, or sponsored by AstraZeneca and was conducted in multiple sites here and in Europe uh, used a pure CMET inhibitor for patients with papillary RCC. This was a single arm study uh, of a 90 patient uh, trial. We await the results uh, of this. There are a lot of uh, tissue based uh, 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 assays looking at the uh, CMET alteration and the uh, impact of this agent that's a pure CMET inhibitor uh, uh, to see if we can identify a subgroup of patients with papillary RCC that benefit the most from CMET uh, uh, blockade. What about ongoing clinical trials in not just papillary but the uh, non-clear cell in general? And here are the, some of these trials. This is uh, being conducted at Memorial uh, combining bevacizumab, the anti-VEGF, plus everolimus. Uh, the, uh, there is a, a Korean study as well as a study at Mayo uh, looking at pesapanib in this uh, diverse uh, histological group. And I think, you know, here I'd like to pause and, and uh, emphasize a couple important uh, studies that we are conducting uh, in patients with renal medullary carcinoma. I mentioned to you earlier that this is a rare tumor that's devastating, unfortunately, that afflicts uh, uh, young people with sickle cell trait. In the U.S., these are African-American, but uh, we have seen some patients who are actually Caucasian who have sickle cell trait who also can develop this uh, devastating disease. So uh, until recently, there was never a trial uh, for these rare tumors, and for in particular renal carcinoma. So now we have two trials at MD Anderson, one using a, an easy H2 inhibitor. This is the name of the drug. It's from a company, Epizyme, and we are uh, conducting this uh, trial in patients with uh, metastatic renal carcinoma. And we have seen already some interesting, uh, some promising uh, results. Uh, two of the six patients we have uh, enrolled have actually responded to this agent. So there is hope that hopefully as we continue developing this drug, as we treat more patients that we will see, we will see consistent result with uh, activity of this agent uh, in uh, patients with renal medullary carcinoma. But we know that uh, from previous experience that there is no one drug that's going to cure kidney cancer. So we are working to combine an agent such as TAS metastat, the EZH2 inhibitor, with immune therapy. So this is another trial that we have at MD Anderson here that we are uh, conducting in RMC patients uh, using a, a PD-1 antibody, this agent from Merck, uh, in patients with RMC. And there are some other uh, uh, drugs that we have set our sight on to try to test in this disease. So uh, the last two, three slides, I want to uh, just tell you how I treat my patients with non cell RCC. So for chromophobe RCC, those patients have usually a more indolent uh, course. They do live longer, even without treatment. Uh, but obviously, the disease is not curable uh, when it is in the metastatic setting. But any VHFR-TKI, uh, you know, the experience with sunitinib and uh, pazopanib 
have uh, led us to believe that there is an activity with the VGF RTKR, but these are patients, as I said, because of the TSC1 uh, mutation, uh, these are patients who are most likely uh, uh, will respond to an mTOR inhibitor such as Everolimus. Uh, I mentioned about RMC, how we, uh, how we treat patients with RMC. Chemotherapy has been the mainstay, and this is the same chemotherapy we, we use for, to treat patients with bladder cancer. Uh, some of the old cytotoxic agents have helped some patients, but unfortunately, the vast, vast majority of these patients will have then progressive disease because they develop resistance, and uh, we know that chemotherapy is not a curative therapy for these patients. Um, sarcoma, what about sarcomatode? This is a very aggressive uh, disease. Uh, and it can occur with any of these subtypes. How our approach to treat those patients have been to use a combination of cytotoxic chemotherapy plus tyrosine kinase inhibitors. But this is a situation, an opportunity where we could use an immune checkpoint inhibitor uh, in this disease. And, and this is based on some observations in patients treated with these immune checkpoint inhibitors, particularly the uh, PD-1 inhibitors where we've seen patients who have sarcomatoid D differentiation and more than 90% of their tumors respond dramatically. So there is hope that uh, immune uh, checkpoint inhibitors will, will hopefully, once for all, change the outcome of this dismal disease. For all other uh, subtypes, it's clin clinical trials, clinical trials, and clinical trials. So con my conclusions, there is no established standard of care for patients with non-clean cell RCC, as I mentioned at the outset. The anti-VEGF TKIs are less effective in non-clear cell RCC than clear cell RCC. Temthiromus, which is a standard of care for poor risk disease, is a poor standard of care for patients with non-clear cell RCC. There may be a role for CMAT inhibitors in patients with germline <laughs> mutation of CMAT in papillary RCC. The role of cytoreductive nephrectomy, as Dr. Karam er earlier alluded to, is not established, is not defined yet for non-clear cell as it has been in patients with clear cell. All patients with metastatic non-clear cell RCC should be referred, in my opinion, for enrollment on clinical trials. There are data now that are available from the TCGA uh, to develop rational targeted therapies based on relevant targets in chromophobe and papillary RCC, but it's only through transformative biology-driven trials that we can uh, hope to uh, make a dent in this disease and improve clinical outcome. Trials with immune checkpoint inhibitors are planned, and I thank you very much.